Music family, thank you guys for joining us today. We ask everyone can stand. Kings and Lords. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to. Oh. 
Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's clap for our King of Queen and Lord of Lords. And how many know he's a way maker, that he's a promise keeper, that he is the light in the darkness. Hallelujah. And that is why we worship him. Hallelujah. Oh, we worship you, Jesus.
the darkness, my God, that is who you are. And we call you, we make miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Sing it with us. You are here.
just lift your hands at that phrase. That's who he is. We don't serve the God that is no more. We serve the God of the living. We serve the God who parts seas, who makes a way when there is no way. We serve the God who helps us over the mountain that we've been circling for years. We serve the God of abundance. We serve the God who is ready to do something new. We serve the everlasting Father of love who wants to love you this morning right where you are. He just wants to sit back and receive. Father, we worship you. We honor you. We give you this time. We ask for you to have your way in our hearts and in this atmosphere. Break chains we didn't even know we had, that we may be free and available to you in all ways. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, good morning, Mosaic Church. Welcome. Go ahead and smile at someone as you take a seat or just give a nice wave. It is perfect that we're having our service this morning as who has checked the forecast multiple times this weekend and have watched the inches change dramatically with the snow that is being anticipated. So we're thankful that we can all be here together this morning. Again, we just want to remind you that we have the 9 a.m. service, and that's where our kids' ministry is offered if you're inviting friends or neighbors or loved ones. And then we also offer a 10.30 for those of you who like to sleep in a little bit longer on your Sunday morning. We're so thankful that we have this beautiful space to be able to do that in. Uh, can we just give a round of applause for our serve team members. We love our serve team here at Mosaic Church. They are such a blessing. We couldn't do church without the hands and feet of Jesus. We can't do this without them. And so we just want to invite you into our church, uh, our serve team family. We need some help throughout the week and in different capacities. If you're interested in serving or learning more about serving, stop over at our second time booth following service. You can ask some questions there. One great way to get connected in our serve team is through our growth track. Now, unfortunately, we are going to cancel that this evening due to the forecast that is starting early this afternoon. Um, however, we are going to have it scheduled on the third month, I'm sorry, the third Sunday of every Every month moving forward. So just mark that on your calendar. Look at February, look at the third Sunday, mark that down from 6 to 8 p.m. right here at the church and the growth track room. And so plan on that for February if you're planning on coming this evening. Uh, we trust that God has something special prepared for us on that day in February. Um, also, this week starts our life group host training. We're so passionate about life groups here at Mosaic, and we're so excited them started early spring here in March. And so if you have it on your heart, and it's been a burden on your heart to be a life group host where you have to facilitate this atmosphere where people can grow and change, make sure you show up to these three Wednesdays in February, the 3rd, the 10th, and the 17th from 6 to 8 p.m. here at the church. Our life group coach will help you get a feel resourced so that you can host um, moving forward and, and whatever is on your heart. We have a few groups coming up. One example would be a financial peace group. Who has been through our financial peace in the past? So that means there's a lot of opportunity for some of you to get connected to that. Our financial peace university, of course, is a great way to steward your finances as well, the way God has called us to do that. We're not living in financial depression or feeling de um, or financial debt, but we are free to be able to live generously. A couple more announcements. Our kids right now, our mosaic kids, are enjoying a llama pajama party, and I'm a little envious, and I kind of want to be skipping over there just to see what's going on. I know they have a pinata. They're learning about the qualities of a llama and how that parallels to the qualities of Christ and how to live humbly. So if you see them in little pajamas, you know why today. You can celebrate that with them when you see them. And next Sunday, who's ready for Super Bowl Sunday? Anybody? Any, anybody excited? Some of you are less excited this year than other years. We're excited as a church because Super Bowl Sunday here at Mosaic is a unique Sunday. We'll have some donuts for you guys to start amping up your pre-appetite for your wings and pizza or whatever have you on Super Bowl Sunday. Uh, but also we're going to be hearing um, from different uh, team players, from different teams who are in, in talking about their Christian walk and how that's transferred into their, into their life as an athlete. So it'll be really cool to hear via audience, via visual, this Super Bowl Sunday. If you don't want to, it's actually a fun time to bring some neighbors who maybe typically to the fun Sunday they're not going to miss. At this time, you can uh, pull out your mobile devices. If you'd like, you can go to our website and on our drop-down menu, you can, you can access our notes to follow along with today's service. Otherwise, you can do your own notes section. If you, Some of you, I know, like to bring a journal in that way, so we just know that you can access it throughout the week, that you don't feel limited. So if you're like, oh, what was that Bible verse Pastor Joseph said? You can just go there and access that. And we, again, thank you for wearing your mask at church and where you're at in the building. We appreciate that. Go ahead and grab your Connect cards at this time in front of you. And as you pull out that Connect card, I just want to remind you, 
at the coffee bar after the service, you can pick up your tax receipts for your giving contributions this year. So again, right after service, head over to the coffee booth. You'll see little white envelopes, and you'll find yours to take home with you, and that'll be for tax purposes in this coming year. So after this, fill out your Connect cards if you're first time guest. On that and this is our first time. Have a little something for you to say thanks for joining us. If it's time to Mosaic Church, the second time booth, even if you're not for information, again, have a little just to say thanks for returning and being part of our church family. You can give the little envelopes in the chair in front of you and drop it in the offering box out, or you can give by texting text to give the number behind me. Your generosity truly does make a difference. We don't just put that out there as a slogan. We believe that when we are generous, God is able to that multiply it, make it abundant. So thank you, church, for your giving this year. Let's go ahead and pray that. Thank you. Everything we have is most yours. Privileging and honoring you in that way and putting you first, God. We know that when we put you first in all areas of our life, God, that you are able to bless and just heaven is able to break open over our lives. So we ask, God, that you would bless this and multiply it for kingdom purposes here at Mosaic, that it would reach the ends of the earth, that all may know that you are the Son of God. In Jesus' name, amen.
It's a perfect chance for you to help spread the word. Since 2020, they have shaken the ground we once thought was immovable. It's easy for us to feel insecure, fearful, or exhausted. But God is inviting us into something that cannot and will not be moved. Football Sunday 2021. Release hope. Unlock potential. Be unshaken. If you don't like that, you're not going to let heaven. She's not. What does matter? Two operates where all different people are broken. Glory, serve God with a story that out there. I mentioned this story weeks ago on a You drive, so because of that, uh, so many accidents start happening. And what they decided was that we, we have to do something about this. We have to change something. So what they decided to do is a couple miles, like two miles away, each direction, they put a big billboard, a big sign saying this, please excuse the noise, it's the sound of freedom. Please excuse the noise, the noise, the sound of freedom. So church, let me tell you something. If you hear people jumping up, if you see me right here jumping up and down, let me tell you something. Please excuse the, the noise. It's the sound of freedom. Because at one point, your pastor was caught up in sin and lying, and that was so far away from God. So please excuse the sound of freedom. At one point, I was so far away from God, and He sent His Son, Jesus, while I was dead, while I was, while I was so far away from Him, He sent Jesus to die for me. So, just want to say that this morning. Welcome to Mosaic Church. Would you put your hands together for the online audience? Thank you so much for joining us. Your church. Here in person loves you. We can't wait to have that with us. Church, so for the last couple of weeks, this is to win. To win. And today we're going to end. Start. We're going to have Sunday. And I'm excited for relationship series. We're going to talk on how to draw close to God. What does it mean? Mean to be a good wife. What does it mean for the perfect one to come for you? For the starting some good habits. And w- wouldn't it be fair if I will just talk about starting good habits? Because the reality is, so many of us, we have so many bad habits in our lives that we actually have to stop. Just because we start doing new habits is not enough. We have to start and we have to stop the, some of the habits 
we are doing on a daily basis. And the interesting part, we all have similar goals. Would you agree with me? At the end of the year, we have pretty much similar goals. Maybe you want to eat healthy. Maybe you want to start exercising. Maybe you want to become a better husband, a better wife, a better provider for your family. So we all have similar goals, but the result, we have very different results. We have the same goal, but the How many of you apply at the end of at the beginning of the year? All I want for this year is to leave paycheck to paycheck and stressing every month how to make my bills. Understand that? Right? How about this one? This year I do for I want to put four pounds of weight. I want to eat poor, and I want to be young. Make it happen. None of you, right? How about this year? I want to become a DJ. This year, I want to look at it. Because they're trying to want to plan that. I'm being all do the my You can
and in your heart, which is able to save you. So how do we break ha bad habits? How can we break a bad habit? Well, first of all, you have to acknowledge it. You can't win over something that you don't know what it is, right? You have to call it out. You cannot defeat what you can't define. Maybe for some of you, it's attitude, bad attitude. Maybe you have a critical spirit, a complaining heart. Or maybe you have a gossiping tongue. Maybe you're saying, well, I don't gossip. I just tell other people to pray. Well, call it whatever you want. They call it gossip. Maybe you're overeating. Maybe it's digital for you. Maybe it's Facebook. Scroll, click, scroll, click, scroll, click. Maybe it's watching porn. Maybe it's your mobile device. You can't stay without that mobile device. And if you give it to somebody, I can probably see a lot of you. Ah! Give it back to me. Because you just can't stay without it. You are so hooked to it. For some of you, it can be substance. It can be sugar. You're addicted to sugar. You're addicted to nicotine. Maybe to a prescription. Maybe to alcohol. My pastor used to tell me this. If one, more than one person that loves you tells you you have a problem, chances are you have a problem. For me personally, ever since Apple came out, how many of you have an Apple iPhone? Ever since Apple came out with uh, how much time I spend on, on my phone, uh, I actually, I, I started cutting my time off. I don't want to leave church base and look all day long in somebody's highlights and lose the God-given potential that God gave me. So I cut some of the apps. I'm 10 minutes in and then I'm out because I want to live my life in obedience of what God called me to do. How many of you know that normally good habits, it's, it's usually they start more difficult. Uh, be why? Because they know, know if you start a, a, a good habit, normally the payoff is sometime in the future. It's not like you get the result right away. So you want to start and you want to get in shape and you start jogging in the morning when it's cold out. And you don't see the results right away. But nine months later... You just realize you just lost six pounds. And you start looking at that and it's like, oh, I started having six pack. Pray God. Praise God. Maybe you start going to church and you wake up early in the morning and it's hard. It's like you don't want to get up. But you start going every Sunday and you start being plugged and you start helping people. And a year later, you just realize, I can't believe it. How close I am to God. I can't believe the relationships that I built in the church. Now, the bad, the bad habits is the opposite. If good habits, the payoff, it's sometime in the future for the bad habits. The payoff is normally right away. Right? I mean, sin can be fun. Do you agree with me? Well, like, no, I'm not going to raise my hand in church to say sin is fun. Sin can be fun. If you don't think it's fun, you either do, didn't do it right or you are lying in church. Choose where you're sitting. It is. Immediate perceived benefits. Ooh, this Siggy relaxed me. I, I just drink just a little bit. I just need to calm down. And you don't get the results till later on 
when they diagnose you with cancer. You are the customer of the year at all-you-can-eat buffet. You like that pudding. It feel, makes you feel good. Oh, I love it. All I can eat for 10 bucks. Oh, man, what a great deal. And a couple of years later, you're going to get, you might find out that you are di diagnosed with stage 2 diabetes. So how do you break a bad habit? How do you break a bad habit? Well, point number one, we have to make it difficult to do. You have to make it difficult to do. Because the truth is, you only have so much willpower. Do you agree with me? There is only that much you can do. And I'll give you an example. Maybe you are trying to start eating healthy. And you go at the office and you somebody just brought in donuts. And they smell so good. And at first, what you do is you just walk by and you look at them. And probably you think, there is no power. Christ in me is stronger than those stupid donuts. I'm going to walk away from it. The next time, you're going to walk around and you're going to look at them. You're like, I'm praising God for what I'm not even eating. Then you're going to walk one more time. And you are saying, I just want to touch them this time. I just want to feel them. I'm not going to eat them. I just want to feel them. Then you're going to walk around again. And this time you're going to say, I'm only going to eat half of a donut. And you're going to wait seven minutes for the other half to eat. Because you think seven is a holy number. And you think that it's only going to be half of a donut if you wait for seven minutes. And after you eat that half, you take the other half. And after you this just destroy your donut virginity, you just eat four. Because now if you ate one, why not eat four? Right? There is only so much willpower that we have. So we have to make it difficult. You have to make it difficult. In fact, Proverbs, Proverbs 4, verse 14 and 15 says this. Do not set foot on the path of the wicked or walk in the way of the evildoers. Watch this. Avoid it. Don't travel on it. Turn from it and go another way. If you didn't hear me the first time, I'm going to tell you four different ways. Walk away. Go a different way. There is this, and I mentioned about this a couple, couple weeks ago. There is a path for, for people that are addicted and they have to, they need more help. And this path is something like this. One day I went for a walk and I saw a big hole and I felt right in it. And it took me a really long time to get out of it. Another day, day, day number two, I went for a walk. And this time I knew that the hole is there, but I still walked in it, right in it. I went all the way down and it took me a long time to get out of it. Day number three, I went for a walk and this time I tried to go around it. But I felt in it, and it took me a long time to get out of it. Day number four, I went for a walk, and I got a little bit way too close to the edge of the hole, and I felt right in it. Day number five, I went for a walk, but I went on a different street. Come on, somebody. You want to make it hard? Sometimes you have to walk on a different street. You have to make difficult. Don't play with fire, right? We all know that story. Don't play with fire. Avoid it. Don't travel on it. Turn from it and go a different way. There is a trigger 
an action and the reward. There is always something that triggers that bad habit. And because that's triggering, it, it's made to take the action. And after that, you get the reward based on what you choose. So watch for these five major triggers. Uh, the first one is place and time. Place and time, mood, moment, and people. And I'm going to get a little bit in it. Place and time, I'm going to talk about it together. Chances you don't overeat when you go to the gym. Is that true? Chances are you don't get high when you go to church. If you do that, let's talk about your spiritual path. We can find a different way. Chances are you overeat, you get high when you are at a Super Bowl party with the wrong kind of friends. Right? You see, there is this guy in the Bible called David. And God is calling him a man after his own heart. But David, this guy truly loved God. But at one point, his life was, was described at the, like, like this. You remember David and Bathsheba. And watch what he's saying. In springtime, when kings go off to war. Where, talk about place and time. David should be at the war, but instead he decided to stay at home. And he went on the roof and it happened to be his neighbor's. And he ended up paying way more. He thought he lost his first son. He had to kill her husband. Wrong time. Wrong place. Wrong time. Wrong place. There is also mood. And when we get in bad moods, the psychologists are telling you to do this, to halt. And halt stands for hungry, angry, lonely, and tired. My wife is saying that I am not hungry and angry. I'm just hungry. Both of these times, in other words, when I am hungry... You can't really talk to me too much because my sugar is dropping pretty much. So we have to be careful what kind of things we are doing when we are hungry, angry, lonely, and tired. Be careful what you put yourself in. There is also moments. There is always that moment that triggers that bad habit. Maybe after a fight with your husband... You call your girlfriend and you start having a bashing party. Maybe after a softball game, you went with your old friends, same friends, for a drink. And you ended up falling in the exactly same spot that you are trying to get away from. Maybe you, you, you flung your test and you smoke pot. Or maybe you pass your test and you smoke Maybe you skip your test and you smoke pot. In other words, you have a pot problem, doesn't matter what. But it's the exactly same moment over and over again. And this is going to be hard for some of you because also can be people. It's so important who you have. In your life. In fact, study conclusive close shows that if you are close to someone, you are so likely to develop the same habits that they have. There was a study that tracked 12,000 people for 33, 32 years. And what they discovered was that if one of their friends became obese, 57% chances that you will do the same. You are more likely to inhabit the same habits. Also, it shows that if your friend is losing weight, 
one third of the time, chances are that you're going to be losing weight as well. It's so important who you surround with. Proverbs 13 verse 20 says this, walk with the wise and become wise. For a companion of fools suffer harm. Now, I, I want you to, I want to explain it to you this way. Do you imagine if my friends, the closest five friends, think how much easier it is for me to live for God, right? My five closest friends is something like this. They all love God. They all are part of a church. They all work out. They are all trying to eat right. They are all, uh, they all have, and they all put their focus on their family. Now think how much, how easy it is for me to live for God if I surround myself with that kind of people. Right? Because that's what I do every day. That's what I'm surrounding myself with. People that I, I want to go in the same direction. Think how much harder it will be for me to live for God. If all day long I will be around people that are addicted. All day long I will be around people that all they do is video games. And every, night, every Friday night we go to casino and we spend money. Think how hard it will be for me to, to live and the standard that God called me to do, right? Be careful who you surround with yourself. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 33 says this. Do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. Show me your friends and I'll show you what? I'll show you your future, right? Church, what's happening when you put, you have a bushel of apples, right? And I eat apples every day. Normally when we buy apples, we buy apples by the bushel. Okay? Because I literally, I have two, three apples every day. What's happening when the entire bushel is healthy? The entire bushel is so good, but you only have one bad apple. What's happening over time? It's slowly catching from the other ones. And later, sooner than later, you just realize that the entire bushel start going bad, and now we have to throw away half a bushel of apples. Because all one. And church, I know this can be hard for some of you. But if you want to break some habits, sometimes you have to say, enough, it's enough. I'm going to walk away and I'm going to get friends and I'm going to get relationships with people that are pushing me to be better. To do good. So how can you do that? Well, remove the triggers, interrupt the action. You have to remove the trigger and interrupt the action. So maybe for some of you, I heard a lot of you that were saying, I normally snooze that clock three, four times before you wake up. Well, maybe what you have to do is put that clock on the other side of the room that you can't just turn around and just snooze. And then seven minutes later, because you go with this holy number, right? This is holy. I'm waiting seven minutes to press it again. And then one hour later, you wake up and you don't know. You, you can't pray now. You don't have time to read. So what you want to do is you want to move that clock on the other side of the room. So you actually get out of the warm bed and stop that. Maybe... You, you overspend on Amazon. You just do click, 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 click. And then you wonder, how did I just spend $130? I have no idea. Well, it was click, click. Maybe some of you, you need a friend that you need to be accountable to. And you need to give that password. And you cannot buy nothing without doing that. And I know it sounds extreme. But church, sometimes we have to go extreme. If you want to break it, and if you want to live for God, sometimes you have to go extreme. Because I'm telling you this, 
Why resist temptation tomorrow if you have the power to eliminate it today? Why would you want to put yourself in that situation if struggling with this thing if you have the chance to stop it today? You know that eating that sugar is, gonna, is bad for you. So rather than dealing with the diabetes, why don't you stop it today and be healthy? Take care of your life. The habits you have today will shape who you will become tomorrow. Do you like the direction your habits are taking you? Take a look, church, think a little bit. Take a look at your life. Do you like where your habits are taking you? Pay, pay, pay it forward. Pay it forward. Think about it in, in five years. What I promise you is it, you're going to say something like this. I have no idea I will lose that much. I have no idea it will come to such a high cost. I have no idea that this will destroy my marriage. I have no idea. I wish I would have spent more time with my kids. If I could only forgive him, forgive her, my relationship right now would be so much better. I wish I would have never started this. I wish I would have stopped. George, why resist temptation tomorrow if you have the power to stop it today? Maybe you're going to say, but I'm weak. I can't do it. That's great. You're in a great place. Because His Word is promising us, when you are weak, I am strong. When you are alone, I am with you. When you can't do it anymore, I'll take care of you. I'll support you. I'll carry you. Christ in me is stronger than my wrong desires in me. Church, I pray this every morning. I promise you, every morning I wake up and I start praying. Christ in me is stronger than my wrong, wrong desires. You know, we talked about Samson that walked 56,000 steps in one direction. To destroy his life. But Samson also had 56,000 chances to stop and turn around. All he did was step after step in the wrong direction. All he had to do is stop and play it forward and realize. That he will end up with shaving shaves and being between two pillars, begging God to give him one place so he can kill himself and kill the others. Church, why resistation tomorrow? You have the chance to stop it today. Stop that bad. Day. Do you like where it's taking you? I have four senses eat. Five this morning. Sing. Today, I just got to oh, that. Joy, joy, share this yesterday. And I met two years in 
for on. Uh, so we have accidents at night. Yeah. Come me. And you want to change the for salt. And she comes back to me. Says, Daddy, I did it. You know what I do, church? So, probably teach I'm stupid. You should be able to. Why are you coming to tell me that you're your daughter? Church, i tell you something. When you are certain, when you are small, when you say this is that's I'm done, your God is rejoicing. I'm so proud of you. So proud of you. you are doing so well. You are doing so well. Most of you that are parents and your kids are walking. Einstein. And write them down. And start going again. And fell down. Can't even walk. What you do? Come on, Daddy. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. Get your God. Come on, come on. You can do it. You can do it. Be free from the religion. The day. Are here to it, not taking that this is you and God. I'm back here, and you off one of these habits, bad habits can ruin your life. Raise your hand. I'm just gonna pray. And I see your hand. 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 Your heavenly Father is you wrong when it's out of you. Well, well, well done, my daughter. Welcome home. Welcome home. God, I'm praying for those that raise their hand. God, would you do something special in them today? Help them. Hey, this new, this new star. This is okay. I'm to you. Take away me. You Would you do something special? Give praise. Sign up. Sign up. Of people that encourages you, you to be better. I have 
friends that are not living the way is not the time, not spending all of my time with danger people. Because I know my happy. My time is by push me to do better. To live fully so that giving me to live life. Amen. You work. If you wanna see, if you wanna see when where you are.